William sat at the edge of his seat, his hands trembling as he stared at the worn carpet beneath his feet. He had never felt so vulnerable, so broken. Across from him, Linda waited, her face pale and her lips trembling with anxiety. He had never imagined it would come to this moment, a confession that would shatter their lives forever. They had been married for two decades, living a life that seemed routine but peaceful. Together, they raised a daughter, Isabel, who was about to graduate from high school and embark on her college journey. They shared a modest home Linda had inherited from her parents. It wasn't grand, but it was theirs. They'd even started a small beef jerky business, which gained some popularity among their neighbors and even local stores. But despite the effort they poured into it, it didn't bring in much money, leaving William's primary job as their only source of real financial stability. And now, sitting in the living room that had been the backdrop of their lives for the past 20 years, William knew he was about to tear it all apart. Linda's voice snapped him out of his thoughts. William, you've been acting strange for weeks now. What's going on? You've barely been home, and when you are, it's like you're a ghost. What is it? His heart raced. This was it, he had to say it. I'm seeing someone else, William admitted, his voice barely above a whisper, but it was enough to make Linda flinch like she had been struck. Her face contorted in confusion, disbelief, and then horror as the words sank in. What are you talking about? Her voice trembled with emotion, you're seeing someone else. After everything we've built together, William couldn't look her in the eye. It wasn't supposed to happen. I didn't plan this. I just, I don't know how I let things get this far, but I did. I'm sorry, Linda. The room felt like it had been drained of oxygen as Linda stood up, her hands shaking. You, she struggled to find the words. You're telling me you've been having an affair? With someone younger, right? That's what you're going to say, isn't it? William swallowed hard. Yes, he muttered, barely audible. Linda's tears came fast and hard, her breath catching in her throat as the reality of it all crashed down on her. We have a family, a daughter who needs both of us. How could you do this? As if the pain of the moment wasn't enough, Linda's phone buzzed. Wiping her eyes, she answered the call, her voice strained. A few moments later, the color drained from her face. You're sure? Seized? She repeated in disbelief. How much do we owe? When she hung up, she turned to William with fury in her eyes. That was the court. Our house is about to be seized, William. We're $80,000 in debt from that damn loan we took out for the jerky business and I had no idea. You were supposed to handle it. You promised me you would. I, William stammered. I thought they'd give us more time. Linda's face was red with anger. You're not just leaving me for another woman, you're leaving us homeless. She stormed across the room, her chest heaving with emotion. Get out, William. Just go. Leave and don't come back. William left that night, slamming the door behind him, the sound of Linda's sobs echoing in his ears. He drove aimlessly, replaying the scene in his mind over and over again. Six years later, it was still a haunting memory that resurfaced without warning. It was a reminder of the mess he had made, of the family he had destroyed. He had lost everything since then. His affair had quickly fallen apart. His job vanished, and any sense of stability slipped through his fingers. He had spent years drowning his regrets in alcohol, drifting from one failed attempt at rebuilding his life to the next. Now as he stood at a crosswalk waiting for the light to change, he thought back to the fight that had ended it all. The light turned green, and William forced himself to move. Today was supposed to be a fresh start. He was heading to a job interview at a factory that produced beef jerky. A cruel irony, considering that it was his failed beef jerky business that had contributed to his downfall. Still, it was a job, and he needed it desperately. When he arrived at the factory, he found himself seated in a dingy waiting area, nerves eating away at him. The interview wasn't anything glamorous, just a packaging operator position. But at this point in his life, he couldn't afford to be picky. He had no idea what else to do. Surprisingly, the interview went well. William was hired on the spot. 
For the first time in years, he felt a flicker of hope. On his third day, he had just started to settle into the rhythm of packing and labeling boxes when his supervisor, Mr. Dunn, approached with a grin. William, you better hurry up. The CEO's visiting today for an inspection, Dunn teased. William, uninterested in the office politics, shrugged. Just here to do my job. Ah, don't be so modest, Dunn said, laughing. If you're lucky, maybe she'll notice you and give you a raise. You're not trying to stay stuck in this position forever, are you? William rolled his eyes, not interested in his boss's attempts at banter. But when he glanced up toward the entrance, his breath caught in his throat. The CEO was walking in, surrounded by her entourage, and it was someone he hadn't seen in six years. It was his daughter, Isabel. William gasped, his voice barely audible as he stared at her in disbelief. Isabel locked eyes with him, and for a brief moment, her confident facade faltered. Then with a cool, detached smile, she said, Dad, it's been a while. William's mind reeled. His daughter, the girl he had abandoned, was now the CEO of this entire company. How was that even possible? He opened his mouth to say something, but the words wouldn't come. I'm here for work, Isabel continued, her voice emotionless. So should you be. She turned to her assistant and gave a quick instruction, then looked back at William. Meet me in my office after lunch. With that, she walked away, leaving William standing in stunned silence. Later that day, William knocked on Isabel's office door, his heart pounding with a mix of guilt and dread. He heard her voice from the other side. Come in. When he entered, Isabel sat behind her desk, her eyes cold and unreadable. She gestured for him to sit, and he did. Though the tension in the room made it difficult to relax. How have you been, Dad? Isabel asked, her tone polite but distant. I've, I've been getting by, William mumbled. He couldn't look her in the eye. How could he, after everything he had done? You're not going to ask how I became CEO. Isabel asked, her voice tinged with sarcasm. You seemed curious earlier. William sighed. I just, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, let me fill you in, Isabel said, her expression hardening. After you left, everything fell apart. The house was seized because of the loan you didn't pay off. We got a fraction of the sale proceeds and mom and I were homeless. She moved in with Aunt Georgina and I was left to figure things out on my own. William opened his mouth to apologize, but Isabel cut him off. Do you even know what happened to mom? She asked, her voice rising in anger. She had a heart attack, dad. I had to drop out of college to save her life. I spent every last penny I had to start over, using the jerky business you left behind as my only hope. William stared at her, his heart breaking. Isabel, I didn't know. Of course you didn't. Isabel shouted, her face flushed with emotion. Because you left. You weren't there when mom needed you, when I needed you. You ran off to play house with some younger woman while we struggled to survive. Tears welled in her eyes, but she quickly wiped them away, unwilling to show any more vulnerability. I started from nothing. I was homeless, jobless, and desperate. But I didn't give up. I rebuilt the jerky business, and slowly, I grew it into what it is today. William's throat tightened as he listened. He had never imagined his daughter would be forced to carry such a burden. I got my first big break with a retailer, Isabel continued, and that deal saved mom's life. I used the money to pay for her surgery, and she survived. Do you know what that feels like, dad? To be the only one responsible for someone's life, knowing that if you fail, they die. William shook his head, tears singing his eyes. I'm sorry, Isabel, I'm so sorry. I don't need your apologies, Isabel snapped. I don't need anything from you. You abandoned us when we needed you the most, and now you want to waltz back into my life like nothing happened. Well, guess what? I'm not that little girl anymore. I built this company from the ground up, and I don't owe you anything. William hung his head, unable to argue. 
He'd have failed her in every possible way, and there was no undoing the damage he had caused. Isabel sighed, her anger slowly fading into something softer, more resigned. You know what, Dad? I don't hate you. I used to, but I don't anymore. I've moved on, but you're not welcome in my life. Not now, not ever. She stood up and opened the door. I'm firing you. Pack your things and go. William stood, his legs weak as he made his way to the door. Before he left, Isabel added one final, cutting remark. And Dad? This time, don't come back. The following weeks were a blur for William. He moved out of the town, ashamed to be anywhere near his daughter or his past. He found work elsewhere, a low-paying job at a small packaging plant, barely enough to get by. He spent most of his days reflecting on the choices that had led him here, the family he had lost, and the daughter who had grown up to be stronger and more successful than he could have ever imagined. But he knew one thing for sure, he had to keep moving forward, even if it meant doing it alone. As William sat in his small apartment one evening, he stared out the window, thinking about Isabel and the life he had missed out on. The life he had destroyed with his own hands. He knew he would never get the chance to make things right with his family, but perhaps, in some small way, he could find redemption in the life he had left.